been some interesting times and lately like the last couple of months some new locks have showed up and about 500 of you send me emails about this one the X Buzz Mag. Uh, this, I'm not really ready to talk about this one yet just wanted to show it to you I haven't start, even started attacking this yet but it's got a really cool looking key uh, there's a couple of demos from the, the dealer, or I guess the only guy that sells it. It's a guy named Lockman28. He showed these on some of the lock boards, and he's got a couple of videos about them. The other one, again, more than 500 of you sent me emails when this first appeared. This is the Forever Lock. So I managed to get moved to the top of Lockman28's waiting list and got this one. I've had a f oh, about four days to play with it, and I wanted to show you what I found. The first thing, when this comes, you'll get these silicone covers, a silicone waterproof cover, blah, blah, blah. And most importantly, you'll get three of these. And these are, these are the keys. They come in these little uh, aluminum coffins, I guess, to carry them around in so they don't get damaged. And please don't lose these because they look kind of odd. If you lose your keys, I can tell you, after having spent three or four days on this thing, you're not getting in it. You're going to have to destroy. It's, it looks like an 8 or possibly a 9-pin dimple lock. There's only one way that this will go in, and this is the actuator. You're not actually going to touch this lock. When you, or this key, when you look at the lock itself, there's no keyhole anywhere. It's really strange looking design. Um, in order to get inside of there, there's a little actuator. This is what you're going to open the lock with. But I can tell you right now, there's no physical connection between this external actuator and the internal lock. So I wasted a lot of time trying to figure out ways to bump this, you know, hitting it with a hammer and such while turning this. There's no physical connection. So that was time totally wasted. Uh, in order to get into this, now you might notice this is a little bit... I, I put this thing through the ringer, guys. Uh, it's missing some pieces. I broke all these off. Actually, they, they were press-fitted in there. This normally goes here, and my idea was uh, I'm going to find out what's under it. So I basically popped that out of there, and I was going to try to drill that to see if I could pull that pin out, and I could not. That's a hardened steel pin. I couldn't get a, any kind of purchase. I managed to barely mark it, as you can see. There's another one here, this tiny little plug. These are purely aesthetic. He was just covering up that pin that holds the actuator onto the shaft. So removing that pin, not going to do you a bit of good. All you do is this actuator is going to fall off. So anyway, how do you get into this thing? How do you get the key into it? And pretty cool. Uh, you slide this part out, and you'll notice on the face, even then, there's nowhere to get the key into it. So you have to rotate this part, like so, and then there's a hole there. Now, if you look up inside of there, there's nothing inside of it. It's a solid chamber. There's nothing to manipulate. No way to get tools up inside of there. Believe me, I tried. So, you take the key and you stick it in there. It goes in one way. And now you'll notice the little actuator handle, the part that you would normally turn, is sticking out there. Well, all we do now, you rotate this back. And now your key is lined up with the internal chamber. Now take a look at this distance and it's not a coincidence this distance is about the same as that key length because the, it's still hanging out there. So what we got to do is push it back and that actually inserts the key pushes it out of that chamber into the dimple lock on the inside and at that point we have a physical connection between the external actuator and the lock itself and we just turn the key internally. There's, you can't see anything and I couldn't find anything to manipulate. Anyway, when we turn that, obviously it opens. Now, a couple things I do want to show you. Uh, first of all, uh, I did try to do physical attacks on this. I'm not sure if this is stainless steel on the outside, but I assaulted this thing with a, a hacksaw and files for about five minutes, and that's all I got. Not very much. Very hard steel body, and it's very thick. You can see, I hope from this angle, how thick this body is. So to cut through this, at least 15 or 20 minutes with a really good diamond hacksaw, guys. So the other weak point I thought might be the shackle itself. Well, the shackle is even harder. There's, again, that's five minutes worth of work. And you can see I barely put a mark. I didn't want to ruin the lock because at this point I figured it was basically, at least from my, with my skills, uh, unpickable. So I thought I don't want to waste the lock. I want to use it. Anyway, I'm going to use this to secure my bike. Well, then I thought, well, maybe I could find some way to manipulate this. So let's go ahead and uh, pull out the key. So we've got it locked. I'm going to pull the key out, put everything back together. So now it's completely locked as if that shackle is inside of there. 
and I wanted to try to see if I could manipulate that. If that was spring-loaded, I figured I could push it out of the way. And it is not spring-loaded. Again, it looks some kind of very hard steel. I don't know if it's stainless or not, but it, it, I just couldn't get it to move. Once that steel pawl is inside of that groove, this thing is not coming open. So, fellas, I'm keeping this lock. This is uh, one of the few I think I'm actually going to use. I trust this lock. I did everything I could to break into it. And aside from a physical attack, probably on the body would be the weakest part. But again, that's 15 or 20 minutes of solid cutting to get through that thing. That's the only way you're going to defeat this lock. If anybody else can think of any ideas, I really would like to hear them before I lock up my $4,000 bike. But my opinion is this is a really great lock. If you're interested uh, in getting one of these, as I said, there's only one source that I could find. Uh, right there is his link. You want to see it again? Okay, there it is again. I will leave that up there and I'll also put it in the notes. Thanks for your time. Stay safe, stay legal, and get yourself one of these things. I think these are pretty good locks.